start. All right, hi, Kim Gaffett with the at the OVF Naturalist at the Nature Conservancy here for another Art in Nature. We have our artist Josie Merck, and we are just coming. It's a little damp day out there, so it was a perfect day to be inside drawing. And you never know what you can find outside <laughs> to bring in to draw. And today I have three different caterpillars, which are just so amazing to look at. This one is about an inch long right now. And it is called a black edged prominent. And it's going to make a moth called a black edged prominent moth. And um, this one is crawling around. It happens to be crawling on a piece of uh, winterberry, but it really would prefer willow or choke cherry, something like that. And it's so perfectly camouflaged that when it's on a leaf, it looks like the leaf. It has a little reddish dark brown saddle, they call it a saddle, in the middle of its body. And the area that's sort of its face, which is kind of right there, is, uh, is sort of like a flat disc and it's reddish brown. And when it gets alarmed, it can get even a little redder. When it gets alarmed, it also takes a, uh, a pose, a defensive pose, where it sort of arches both its head and its tail up. Its tail is split, which is kind of hard to see right now, but yeah, maybe trying as to it, get that. We might see a little bit more. Maybe maybe as it, oh, if you move this leaf, the loose leaf back. Oh, I can see it now. That looks great. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Okay. He's crawling up there. Look at him, how he uses that to push up. He's going up on the edge of the leaf. He's going to make it. There he goes. He's like a rock climber. He just found the right edge. Look at him questing out there, trying to see where he's going to go. Many feet. Lots of feet. How many are they supposed to have? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> they probably have at least six. Okay. I'm going to put this cherry leaf in there in case he would prefer that, but who knows. He's really just trying to find the place he wants to be. He's very active. And this was found by a little friend of mine. Althea found it in her playhouse. Amazing, she spotted it. There's so I camouflage know, it's, in the leaf. Right. How does the mouth work? Could he see him? Uh, it's pretty hard to see its little mouth, but it's... it's Look it's, at the yellow dot on the back of the head. And yeah, it has on that one of those. It has a little oh dot. God. You can see it. Oh, this is great. He's really yeah. moving around. And they have lots of ways to protect themselves. One, as I said, when he arches up both sides, he's trying to be threatening. Plus, that split tail sometimes can protrude little pink things, little pink protrusions from the tail which emit a really foul odor. So maybe a bird that might want to eat it will ignore it. And it's really well camouflaged. So camouflage is a very important natural defense. So if you're just sitting on a leaf and you look like a leaf, just munching away, but there are then you're being pretty well protected from things that might want to eat you. Things like um, cuckoos love to eat Super little caterpillars. Um, the patterning on the back end is so interesting that sort of a star yeah. shape. What did you call it? The a saddle. saddle. They call it a saddle. I want to put my glasses light on gray. it so I can see it better, but I keep fogging. May I get you binoculars? No. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. Actually, you know what? I think I'll use He's, one of those. Can reach for me. He's reaching for that cherry. Thank you. Hmm. So, yeah. You, you won't be able to see through this, but... If you're doing this at home, using a magnifying glass really helps. And you can see its saddle is kind of a maroon red. And its head, has, it's like a flat head. Mm -hmm. And it's, like it's questing up there, six legs in the front. Which Where am I going? And he's got another, another 
four, five. No, nope, looks like another three on both sides in the rear. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Four in the rear, three in the front. And so having a magnifying glass while you're doing mini art in nature is really good. Now look at that guy climbing up that stem. I wonder if you come from this angle, you can see him going over. Yeah, no, he's, um, this is some great, oops. Kinda. Maybe the shadow is too much. Yeah. Hear that ocean roaring in the background? Wind from the southeast. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you're doing art in nature and doing nature sketching, you have to remember to put the date on your art so that you remember what it looked what what season it was. So this is oh, second of September. Mm -hmm. And so this is a late summer hatching. Oh, there we go. There's legs. Oh, late summer okay. hatching. People Eventually, do. he's going to do what's called pupate and make a little, um, uh, not a chrysalis in this case, it's a, um, it's a, okay, look at Josie's drawing here, and then we'll look at your, yeah, then we can look at the book. Okay. Oh, look at that. I love that. See? Yeah. Pink protrusions. Yeah. Cocoon, that's right. It makes a little cocoon. These are probably green right at the back. I didn't they're miss that. Sort of, they're kind of pale, a whitish, those back legs. It's got like a white stripe. I got that. Yeah, yeah, and it comes down to white and then it kind of goes to green. And then if it was alarmed, out of those little split tail would come these little pink protrusions. Right. I wrote that. Oh, you got that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That was the exciting part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You were going to okay. poke it, Kim, I thought. So can you give yeah. a picture of Yeah, so the, here's, a, um, here's a picture of my guide. and Oh, wow, look at that. Here's the caterpillar. Of course, it's about 10 times bigger in the, in the guide than it is in real life. And this is its moth, mm. the black etched prominent. And um, I could read you a little bit. It says, when disturbed, the larvae rears up both ends and retracts its head to show an alarming red and black face, quote unquote face. It's not really its face, it just looks like a face. From the pair of fleshy filaments on the last body segment, it can extrude pink tentacles that give out a foul odor. It feeds on poplar, willow, and wild cherry. The pupating larvae builds a tough brown cocoon using its silk and parts of the food plant to protect the overwintering pupa. So when when this has eaten enough it will what they call pupate into a cocoon and then it'll just be dormant during the winter out in the vegetation and in the spring out of that will emerge the prominent black etched prominent moth, which will then lay eggs, which will then hatch into a larva, just like the one we're seeing now. Inch and a oh. quarter, approximately. I forgot to bring my ruler. Yeah. I wonder, um, yeah, inch, inch and a quarter. I don't think we want to antagonize it, but I was curious by the defensive posture. Let's see of if course we, we want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do try it. Don't, don't do this at home. <laughs> Aim those tails somewhere else, Cam. Let me see if I can get it. pink profusion. Okay, you're under attack now. Doesn't seem to mind. Doesn't seem to mind. Let's see if he likes to be at, see this is winterberry, not its usual food. Let's see if it likes it's the like cherry. It's desperately looking for something to eat. Let's see if he likes. Dunkin Donuts is arriving. Okay, red legs. Red little legs. Yeah. In the front, yeah, the red. The, the front legs are really thin and the back ones are like little pumping uh, much thicker. Yeah. Okay. They look like really they're very separate, the front from the back. It's going for the cherry. All right. Oh, yeah, maybe this is what I was looking for. It's a little tougher, though. Moving on over. That's great. I wonder um, about your other... Yeah. Caterpillars. We got this guy's gotten. He's been very active and gotten a lot of attention. Um, Gonna get a name pretty soon. I see. Of course, it's impossible to know if it's a he or a she. All right. 
Well, we'll just leave him crawling around on his leaf. We'll move yeah. him back into More his the center. dish. Yeah. So he won't disappear on us. And we'll move on to okay. our next subject. What do we have here? Well, mm. this I found in my tomato plant. <laughs> oh. And some I immediately we'll put him around either way. Let's see. Let's Look see what, the damage he just done. Damage my tomato. Yeah. Okay. I'm afraid if I, here, if I move, move this. I'm gonna go like this. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Well, let's see if we can get this tomato out of the way. So what's cool about this? This is actually, although I wanted to call, call it a tomato hornworm, it's really a tobacco hornworm. Oh. And you can tell that be, they're very similar. And there are a lot of things to notice about these. It's got a wonderful little angled markings on the side of its body and but that horn is red and that's makes it a tobacco horn worm and is it a tail or a horn because i'm just wondering is that the back end of the caterpillar? it is the back end but they call it a horn okay i think it's the back end now that i'm it looks like it's the back end hold on get back into focus there we go yeah we have another one we can look for sure um where am i now Find it. Wow. Not nearly as active as the other one. Nope, this one is. These patterns are amazing. Yeah. Are you seeing those? Here, let me bring it over where you can see it a little more closely. Those angled. Oh my god, it looks just like the one in the book. Mm -hmm. So, Alright, so what do we have? Here it is, up here. The tobacco hornworm. And you can see those. It's got like little red dots on the along its side. Those are called spicules. And then it's got lines over the top, blue and white lines uh -huh. that go at an angle. And then its horn is red and it produces, it will uh, uh, eventually pupate as well. And here's its pupa. It looks like mm -hmm. a little hard brown sort of cylinder thing with a handle and it also will stay out during the winter in that form and then in the spring the the moth will emerge and it looks like this it's a carolina sphinx moth and the tomato hornworm that looks very similar but it um it produces something called the five spotted hawk moth and its um horn is black I have this right. They both will be big moths. Moths of about four and a half inches wide. You see how accordionized it is? It yeah. must be able to stretch way, way mm, out. Yeah, look at that. Each section has about ten. You could use it as a, milli a, a ruler. Well, this I found this on my tomato plant yesterday, and it was half the size. Oh, really? They grow really fast. Wow. And um, just yeah, on the tomato hornworm, the the rear spine horn, the rear horn is green and black, where this is red. So this is definitely the That's tobacco. That's called the rear. It's the rear. Oh. For some reason, I felt that was a rhinoceros horn. No, mm -hmm. rear. It's a. Uh, okay. I guess I'm paying attention. It's very okay. spiky. Very spiky. Let me. Uh, now, is that for defense? That's very, yeah, threatening behavior. It doesn't really do anything. It's not like it punks you or anything. I'm going to just put it down. Sure. And see if I can get the other one. But you have another That's right. I have a giant one. I'm not sure. Okay. He seems to be getting ready to pupate. But just to show you how much bigger it is. Yes, yeah, look at that. You can see like the V pattern here. Down the back. This one's changing color. It's changed color actually That's since it. I've been here. I don't know if you can see in there. Can you see, see in there? Oh yeah, let me see. See now that was all bright green, just like the one we have on the table. But look, it's like three times the size. Yeah, it's big. And, and it's, it's turning brown, and it's gotten less active. Oh, there he goes. More active than the guy sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how he articulates it. 
Yeah, let me see if I can get him out and sure. do a little, little blue. side comparison. Can get blue for this guy's starting to strike. Okay. Oh, and this guy's starting to move as well. Yeah, you're gonna need like a bright red, almost like a magenta pink in that blue. This is really cool because probably by the end of the day, it's gonna be completely different. I'm gonna have to take a picture of that. Oh, okay. But here here he is. Let's see if I can get him to move out on so the you white. That, there is this horn in comparison. You can see. He's holding on to the screening. Okay. I don't want to move. Oh, oh, oh. It looks like a pineapple or a pine cone. <laughs> a similar kind of layering. Okay, oh, maybe you shouldn't big, watch. Okay. <laughs> Let me get them flipped over here. There we go. Would you like to shake that? I All right. I'm getting it. It doesn't squish. Okay. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> Sorry, Charles. <laughs> I'll take care of that later. <laughs> It's horn change colors. Oh, it's still red. You yeah. see those dots along the body that are like eyeballs. They're yellow yeah. with a red dot in the middle and a black edge. They are amazing. Let me get that a little closer to you. Just amazing. Through the pinkish along the back. Yeah, yeah, but it was all green this morning. So I think this one is getting ready to pupate. Into its cocoon for Feel the winter free, time. Feel free, buddy. We're not going to hold you back. Great. He doesn't like to do that while we're watching. <laughs> All right. It's something for later. <laughs> now he's stuckered himself. So they can be quite big. And they destroyed three tomatoes and ate all the leaves on my tomato plant. Two of them. I saved my other plant. Just in time. Just How in did time. they get the word? Now, where did they come from? I don't know. Something over on Kim's porch. Let's go. Mm. Okay, we got a good okay. picture of him. Let's see, you're working on the patterning, I can see. Well, I wanted to show that white and blue, mm -hmm. very tiny. So I have to color in around to get the white. So, tobacco hornworm is going to be a Carolina Sphinx moth. And they like, what do they like to eat here? They like to eat, um, oh, they like to eat their voracious appetite for tobacco, tomato, potato, and other related crops. All together. Wow. An abundant food supply will nourish the larva to maturity at a startling six inches in length. So this is getting pretty close. These are all old world plants. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. It probably made it, it was probably a god for the Aztecs or yeah. not. The Incas. We'll see. Yes, I don't seem to have the uh, scientific names in this book. By the way, if you are out there in video land, this is the best caterpillar book I've ever used. Oops. Okay, I thought he's gonna. He's heading to the edge. Yeah. Way out of print. Uh, like Peterson's Amy first Bartlett guide Bartlett. of caterpillars, and it's tiny. And yeah. I've never looked for a caterpillar I didn't find in this little book. Okay, okay I gotta get this back yeah. confined. Yeah. All right. Yeah. In you go. Come grow in. It's going home. <laughs> Oops. He's a monster, Ken. Yeah, he should be. He ate two perfectly good red tomatoes. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we'll put him back with his. And so it's. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down. The a moth is. It's the was the phoenix. The moth is um. The, is the same uh, the Carolina Caroline Carolina Sphinx moth. No. What do we have over see. here? Caroline should be happy about that. Yeah, right. Here, I'll, I'm going to pull out the, the, um, barrel. Let's try this. I'm I'm move, should I'll, I'll should I move this person sure. over here? He's yeah, not going to go anywhere, is he? He's not going to go anywhere. We'll keep an eye out. So here's something a little bit more well known. In this jar. I feel like a mad scientist. Mm -hmm. Our beautiful 
monarch Look at caterpillar. That. Oh my gosh. And it's eating, it's, it's primary, almost only food is milkweed, common milkweed. Other plants in the milkweed family it will eat, but this is what it loves. And it's a beautiful black, white, yellow striped caterpillar. And these, this is an amazing story of this caterpillar. Probably all of them are amazing if you know them. This is going to eat and eat and eat. It'll get bigger than it is now, maybe half again as big. And then it will make a chrysalis, which is a type of cocoon. And that's what we will have him stay right here. The cocoon Oops. looks so much smaller than him. That's how it's I know, doing. it's going to spin into a... There we go. The head or where the antennae are. Uh, well, it's funny with these guys because their antennae are here. Let's put it over here. Where you okay, see. sure. Yeah, that end is the head with the longer antennae, but they have like a little antennae at the other end too. So this is, let's see if we can, this is going to be hard because it moves. This is the chrysalis. So it's, it's form, it's a form of cocoon and the monarch caterpillar will eventually crawl up to the top of something like I keep it in a jar and it crawls up to the top on the screening which I have there and it'll hang in a J shape and then all of a sudden it'll start squiggling and moving around it'll shed its skin and this is what it forms this chrysalis this little green jade gem in the biological world it's got little gold spots on it and sometimes you can start to see the shape of the wing in there. I think you can see, yeah, I'm catching yeah. that right here. All right. So it'll stay in this form for about uh, 12 to 14 days. Kim, could you rotate it around um, so I could see those, um, those sure. markings? Yeah, when I yeah. do the other way, I'm having a hard time with the focus. Okay. Excellent. Okay, that's Is okay. That good? Yeah, that's great. Okay. And in about 12 days, probably another week for this one, maybe less, it will, you'll, st it'll get clear. It won't be green anymore, and you can see the black and orange of the monarch butterfly. And it will split the outer edge of the, of the chrysalis, and out will come the monarch butterfly. And its wings will be all crunched up. And when it get hits the air, it will start pumping fluid into the wings, and slowly over a course of a few hours. The wings will get to be full sized and then it is ready to go on. And if it's the summer or very, very early fall, it will go on and lay another egg, which will then, or many eggs if it's a female, which will then emer uh, hatch into a monarch caterpillar like we have over there on the leaf. If it's late fall, about the middle of September, it's Energy is not to eat anymore or not to mate. Its energy is spent on migrating. And almost all of the monarch cat, uh, butterflies east of the Rockies will all migrate down to a forest in Mexico. One small area. And it's amazing. And they're over winter there. They'll kind of go into a kind of dormancy. And in March, when it gets warmer and the light changes and starts getting longer, the monarch caterpillar will, I mean, sorry, the monarch butterfly will then mate and start the process all over again, lay new eggs, and they'll start migrating northward. And by the time one gets to the same latitude as Black Island, it's probably about four to six generations later. And it'll be that last generation that's never been to Mexico that will then migrate back to Mexico. Oh, it's it's just phenomenal. There's a small population that they're discovering that may go to Florida if it's on the extreme east coast. And, and uh, monarch butterflies west of the Rockies uh, are going to a small area. They split it. Some go to, the, to Mexico. Some go to Baja. 
but the main main population is the one that goes to Mexico. The are others they are very minor. Their forest we sometimes hear. They are losing their forests, um, and the way they measure how successful a year will be is how many overwinter, and the forest is being decimated, so there's less area for them to overwinter instead of being hectares and hectares of forest they're down to about sometimes as few as 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 many as 11 sometimes as few as two okay. hectares of butterflies and i've never been but people who have and you can go online i'm sure and get pictures of what it looks like in the mexico forest where the monarch butterfly is overwintering now and, come on bluff island i saw with you last year in pine trees Yes. So Maybe that's a secret. I don't know. <laughs> that's not a secret. So in the, uh, I'm gonna just put yeah. them back up here. In the um, in the fall, when they're getting ready to mi when they are migrating, they are. This is a cold-blooded animal, which means it can't. Right. Cold-blooded animal, yeah. which means uh, it it's. It needs sunlight and air t outside air temperature to make it be warm enough to um, to to be active. So at night, when it cools down in September, they'll find a roost to over spend the night, where they can be basically sleeping, resting in a sort of semi to uh, uh, semi hibernation, but not really a hibernation. But they. One will land on the, and they always land on the south east side of a tree, usually a pine tree, but can be other things. And they'll, the first one will set off a, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. will set off a, uh, will put out a pheromone, and so it'll attract others. And pretty soon the whole tree can be covered with mm. monarch. Mm butterflies just waiting out the night and the reason it's on the southeast side is because that's the first side of the the tree that will get sunlight in the morning mm -hmm. and they'll warm up and if you happen to be there you'll see all of a sudden all the little wings sort of fluttering and getting active and then they'll go on their next stage so Amazing. it's a real treat and no birds want to come in and say, yeah, look at this feast. Yeah, so monarchs are well known for the fact that they're highly toxic. And the reason they're so toxic and therefore not edible or delectable to birds and other animals is because they eat milkweed. And milkweed is known for its white milky latex substance. If you've ever broken off a milkweed, you see the white ooze, sticky ooze. Well, that's very toxic substance, but the monarch thrives on it. But anything that eats the monarch will not thrive. It'll find the, the animal to be, the caterpillar to be toxic and distasteful. So they, uh, they animals have learned not to go after the orange and black monarch butterfly or these caterpillars. Mm -hmm. Now there's other orange and black butterflies, one particularly called the Viceroy, that looks very similar, but it doesn't eat um, milkweed, so it's not toxic. And as a result, but it's the same color as a monarch, so birds will leave it alone because they can't quite tell the difference and they don't want to take the chance of eating the poisonous, toxic one. So, nature is just completely amazing. And uh, if you take time to draw it and look at it closely, you learn so many things. It's amazing how much of this leaf, just watching. Yeah, he chomping. just he's just chomping away. He or she. They can. The, yeah. The, that, they, they, they. Sorry. Got it. <laughs> they will eat a lot of milkweed leaves. I'll have to get it a whole new, mm -hmm. a whole new stock of milkweed for later. Great. So there's an organization called Monarch Watch. They're based at Kansas University. And um, we actually tag monarch butterflies with little tiny tags, uh, and that's how they found out where they migrate to, because for a long time nobody knew until they started tagging them, and then they started showing up in this one very remote but isolated place in Mexico. 
So, and that's how they're finding out that there's a couple of smaller areas in Florida and in Baja, California. Oh, through the Monarch Watch through, program. Yeah, yeah excellent. So, so if anybody's really interested in this, they can go online and look up Monarch Watch and you'll find out all kinds of cool stuff and maps and tags and maybe your local Nature Conservancy organization is doing a program with them. Did you ever get any back, Kim? I haven't had any returnee yet. Okay. Unlike bird banding, they don't let you know. You have to look up your numbers oh and see if oh, really? they're not quite so um, advanced. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps they'll get there, but there's a lot, of, you know. But I'd be amazed if I ever got one, but I always look just yeah. in case. And you have school children help you, right? Right, so this has been in the past a project of the second grade which studies insects, their very first unit, and they raise monarch caterpillars and they bring them into the classroom and then we tag them and one of the things you do when you tag them is note what sex it is, male or female, and what the date is, and then they start graphing how many are male and how many are female and they work in their math lessons and I have a couple of people on the island who I tag for because it's quite fun. So, so now look, there's the chrysalis coming. Are those our, our uh, moth people? Um, no, they don't actually. Okay. Barbie Michelle and her granddaughter Lily oh, yeah. are great <laughs> fans, and, and Tracy Finn mm -hmm. and her charges also do a lot with. They find In fact, eggs. They find eggs. I found an egg that's that is not immersed. I didn't bring it to them. It's really tiny. Minuscule. Yeah. Um, but in fact, the the um, black edged prominent that we saw earlier right. came from Tracy. It's on loan. As is this particular monarch, as a matter of fact. I have to return them to the children at the end of the okay. session. <laughs> in the, good the, shape. The, the caretakers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Do you have a picture of the distinguishing the, the female and the male monarch? I was just curious how you would um, oh, yes. how you would sex them. We saw that, but okay, we had I do. Here we go. Yes. yes, it was. So here's our monarch caterpillar mm -hmm. in the book. Same wonderful book, um, and the chrysalis. And here's the monarch butterfly. And this vein right there has. Like Is that a, that dot? A, that little dot. They yeah. call it a pocket right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That means that it is a male. And okay. that little pocket produces a pheromone to attract the females. On the females, it doesn't have that dot, but all the veins are a little bit thicker. These are okay. very fine. Mm. So it's actually pretty easy to tell if you can get a look at its hind wing. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, but you wouldn't know that at first unless you had started doing a lot of drawing. You said, hey, how come this butterfly has this little dot and another one doesn't? And then you start asking questions from your little observation. And before you know it, you're a scientist learning about butterflies. <laughs> That's great. All righty. All right, so get out there. And some of these caterpillars are really tiny, like that. This, this guy, where'd he go? Sharp eyes, come back. Uh-oh. No, oh, I'm sure he's here. He's here. Oh, here he is. He's right there on that leaf. I think he prefers. He likes this, he, does, yeah. he doesn't want the cherry. He wants the... There, he, there he is. But see, you have to be, like... Very observant. Very observant to catch that. To catch that. Who, looks, me? <laughs> yeah. That's Nobody good. here but us. <laughs> so look at the difference between that one. The monarch. It's amazing. Oh look and our tobacco hornworm is about to go exploring. Okay. There he goes. Alright, well this has been fascinating today. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, oh, Josie. Drawing's coming. Good. Oh, look at that beautiful well, and and many, if you on the website now where we post these videos, we're also posting uh photos of Josie's drawings from these sessions so definitely check it out and Kim's wonderful talks oh definitely okay thanks everyone thanks bye thanks wait till